Welcome to Impact. I'm Nick Barbie, your host for the government segment. And today our guest is Dr. Margaret King, uh, commonly known in the community uh, as Peggy King. Yes. And I may, may I call you Peggy? Absolutely. And uh, this is Women's History Month, uh, and Peggy King is uh, certainly a woman of achievement locally, and uh, we've had an interesting conversation before the show, and uh, she had a, uh, a varied background, a lot of experiences that we're going to talk about today. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Peggy King, <laughs> Dr. King. Um, you, you grew up in New Jersey, you were telling me, uh, before yes. you arrived in uh, this region. Yep. Um, and your dad was in the military? Yeah, my dad was a West Pointer, uh -huh. and uh, when he went overseas during World War II, my mother opted to move down to New Jersey where his parents were, and we lived with them. And mm -hmm. then dad lost his leg during the war and ended oh. up in the hospital in Atlantic City. And he had been in, with the infantry, and because he couldn't do that, he opted to retire from the military, took a job with the state of New Jersey in civil service. Mm -hmm. So I really spent my years growing up down at the shore, which of course is a wonderful place to grow up back yeah. then. It wasn't yeah. real crowded. Nice and stuff. environment, sure. Yeah. Um, but then uh, so when I started thinking about graduate school, I started off as a high school teacher. Mm -hmm. and, and that was, let, uh, stop there a second, okay. Toms River High School, yep. Toms River, New Jersey. Yep. You told me about one course that you taught because, you know, courses were different then. Yes. Uh, and what was it called? It was called Family Living. Family Living. And what did I, it encompass? What was the... Well, I was a, had majored in history in college, but at that time there was a glut of history teachers. So right. uh, Tom Zerver offered this social studies course called Family Living. It was right. really a combination of psychology and sociology, yeah. but also with a strong emphasis on marriage and family. And mm -hmm. uh, it was an interesting experience being right out of college teaching a course like that. Yeah. Uh, I remember one time I actually had a student who was probably close to my age because he'd been in the military and then had come yes, back to school. Sure. But it was a unique course. The woman who taught it, I think, had a national reputation back then because mm -hmm. she started the course, I want to say, in the 1940s, but it may have been 1950s. But right, but on, even then, yes, early on. Yes, uh, And her name was, I believe, was Elizabeth Force, mm -hmm. and she had written her own textbook even. So well, oh, that's great. It was, uh, it was interesting. So yeah. I taught it for four years. The first year I was scared to death. The second year I had sure. fun. The third year I started to get bored. And then yeah. the fourth year I said, time to go. Back to school. Back to school. Well, Peggy, you've had a long career in education. You know, going back to the beginning, uh, what sparked your interest? What motivated you uh, to become an education professional and a, and a PhD in education? Yeah. Uh, my, my mother was a very strong role model for me. Mm -hmm. um, Mom was a teacher. Uh, she went back and got her master's degree after my father passed away at the age of 58. Oh. And um, she taught both at high school level. She was a department chairperson and then also taught at Ocean County College. Mm -hmm. Um, and her mother was a teacher also. Oh. In fact, both of her parents were teachers in, oh, the, Am in nice? the Amsterdam area. Amsterdam? Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Um, Ethel Whipple was, mm -hmm. was my grandmother's name. And, yes. Um, I think she was very, very, very well liked and respected. And, and, yeah, in so the they, were, they were significant women of achievement in their own right, though. Yes. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. I initially thought I'd get into high school guidance work, but mm -hmm. my mother was a graduate of UAlbany. Mm -hmm. um, back oh. then it was, of course, a teacher's college. Yes. We had always vacationed up this way because mom's family was from Fultonville. I was actually born in Gloversville. Fultonville, Gloversville, sure. Yep. And uh, so when I started thinking grad school, I started thinking Albany and mm -hmm. um, came up, was looking in initially to get into guidance, but a friend kind of pointed out the different certification requirements between New York and New Jersey and suggested I look at the student personnel program. Mm -hmm. Now I'd gone to a very small private liberal arts college. You mm -hmm. know, we had a dean of men, a dean of women, and house mothers mm -hmm. back then. <laughs> yeah, um, I remember And so that. then getting yeah. into UAlbany, it was like a whole other world. Sure, you had huge. You had student activities, yeah. you had, you know, housing, you had, you know, everything. And it huge was just campus, huge thousands campus. Of, thousands of students. Yep. Yeah. So it was, it just opened up a new world for yes. me. And uh, so as a result of that, I ended up getting into community college work. Mm -hmm. um, the year I was in my master's program was the year when there was a lot of the anti-Vietnam War stuff yes. going on. Yes. And um, my dorm actually was firebombed at one point. It was. Yep. And uh, we had, you know, everybody, the campus was just, you know, really going a little bit crazy. And um, so I decided at that point that maybe I wanted to go back to New Jersey, where it was quieter. <laughs> yeah, back to so, the shore. Yes. Lay on the beach. <laughs> yeah. Yep, yep. So I uh, took a counseling position at Ocean County College in Tom's River. Okay. And uh, got into the area of academic advising, which became my love. And uh, yes. got involved with the National Academic Advising Association. And um, 
one, well, first, I, at one point then I also decided to thinking about getting my doctorate. Yes. Came back up to Albany. My dissertation chairman said, Peggy, don't leave the area. You'll never finish. Really? And I knew he was right. Mm -hmm. So there was a director of counseling position at Schenectady County Community College. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, I'll take it, and you know, I'm just going to be here for a couple of years, and then move that's on. That's what they all say. Yep. That's and, and that started 1982. I'm I'm looking at your resume here. Yep. Uh, we could do a whole show just on your resume. Yeah. I can't get through the whole thing. But, so yeah. you started in '82 at the community college. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So I was director of counseling, and then you know became associate dean for student development yeah. and worked with advising and counseling and career services. Um, and also you, was a founding member of the National Academic Advising Association. Became president of that. Um, I was first community college person to be president of that organization, which was kind of There's neat. a woman's first. That's yep. great. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And um, that had 10,000 <clears> members <throat> yep. from colleges and universities across the U.S. and Canada. Yeah. Yeah. It's just really a great organization. So your, but, your entree to the community college in 1982, you looked at it as sort of a way station, like, you know, I'll do this for a while. And, yep. So uh, I, <laughs> it didn't I, work out that no, way. No, it didn't. Yeah. I've always worked under presidents who encouraged community involvement. Mm -hmm. So I just started getting involved with things in the community. Oh, did you? And, you did know, you? The, it just sort yeah. of, I got hooked on the area. I just yeah. decided I really liked it here and wanted to stay. And, you know, I finished my doctorate in 84. Yes. And uh, as I said, I'm still here. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, uh, good for us that you did stay. And you retired out of the community college uh, yeah. Two in years uh, ago. 2010. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. uh, I'm sure it was a bittersweet experience because I know I had worked with you at the college right. in certain capacities. Yeah, you were I, president of the board at yes, one point. Yes, but, you know, I, yeah. I really always appreciated and, and really valued all the good people that were part of the college and the, yes. uh, the staff and the, uh, the, the teaching staff. Yeah. Um, so you, was, you were tired out as associate dean for student development, mm -hmm. um, emeritus, <coughs> and then... And you did uh, counseling in uh, 82 when you went there. That's yep. what you did, right? Yep. Yeah. And the other thing that I'm proud of, too, was before I retired, um, I went to a conference that SUNY had called Reimagining SUNY Retirements, mm -hmm. where they were encouraging colleges to form retiree organizations. Oh. And most of the four-year schools already had them, but very few two-year colleges did. So I uh, worked very closely with someone down at Suffolk Community College, mm -hmm. and then we formed a retiree organization at Schenectady, and oh, I'm, I'm currently president of that. Good. Well, that's another and first. Yes, <laughs> uh, and it's another say. way for yeah. me to stay connected with the college. That's one, and that's a good thing to do because yes. it's a wonderful place, you know. And I'm sure you got a lot of uh, gratification out of seeing, you know, that you had an effect on students and people's lives and careers. Yes, that's the and best part of teaching, yeah. I, I think. And, and I had a wonderful staff too, yeah. so that yeah. really did a yeah. great job. How many presidents did you work under since three? Two, three different presidents. Well, if you if you don't count the interims, Dr. Lassiter right. hired me. Right. Yeah. And um, then right. Dr. Burnham. Right. Last year. And Peter, then Peter actually Burnham. it would have been four. Right? Excuse me, Peter oh, Burnham. Yeah. Yep. And then Gabe Basil. Yes. And then Dr. Bullock. Dr. Bullock. Well, that's great. So you saw a lot of changes at the community college. Yes, yep. yeah. It's really been growing and, yes. you know, moving in new directions. And well, thank you for your good. service there. Oh, your community great. leader, well, you weren't kidding when you said you wanted to get involved <laughs> in the community because your community leadership is like there's, oh, there's dozens of things that you've done, and I, I, I can't get through all of them. But when you went into community service, well, let's look at your honors first. You got the uh, Schenectady County Community College Foundation Award for Excellence in Professional Service, and the foundation is the scholarship and the uh, um, it's kind of the fundraising the arm. fundraising arm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you got the State University of New York's Chancellor Award for Excellence in Professional Service. Mm -hmm. uh, the Nakata. Nakata, and that's, you can get that's, that's the a, National Academic, Academic Advising Association. Okay, Award for Service in 1990. Then you got another Nakata, Nakata Award, uh, the Virginia Ann Gordon Award for Excellence in the Field of Advising, which was close to your heart, yeah. counseling. Hudson Mohawk Association of College and Universities Community Service Award, the YWCA of Schenectady Woman's Achievement Award, which is appropriate, and that's great. Yeah. Then we've been through your educational experience, your background, and then you get into community leadership, and suddenly I see you're on the Schenectady City Council. So <laughs> yep. tell me how that happened. And that's where did you a, that's find? A, that's a long story. And where did you find the time to do that? Is is the question. Now I should mention that you are the president. Uh, Peggy King is the president of the Schenectady City Council at this time. 
But how did you get involved in the city council? Well, it was back in 96, and the two Republicans who were on the council, one became the mayor, Al mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and Peter Gitterelli got elected to the county legislature. So mm -hmm. the Democrats got to appoint two people. And I had been obviously involved in a lot of community stuff. I'd been oh, yes. a, a little bit involved <clears throat> with politics. And, mm -hmm. you know, Don and Kay Ackerman are very close friends, and Don was on the county legislature at that time. Yes. So I had helped him campaign and had done yeah. some things. Well, so they, I was approached about whether I would be interested in throwing my hat in the ring to be on the be appointed to the city council to mm -hmm. the vacant seat, and I, you know, thought about it and I hemmed and hawed. I wasn't quite sure I wanted to do it, and finally, it was right before Thanksgiving, and they said, "Look, if you're going to do it, we've got to get your resume into Dick Naylor." And mm -hmm. I, Dick was a personal friend; he sure. works in higher ed also. Yep, the city chairman. Uh, yep. So, right before Thanksgiving, I thought, "Oh, what the heck? Let me just." So I sent my resume in. I've sent a note to the pre college president, and I just said, I've done this. I will talk with you before it goes any further. Yeah, good. Came back from vacation. For, I was down in New Jersey for Thanksgiving. I uh, had a message on my phone that they wanted to interview me that night. Mm -hmm. So I went to the interview, and, of course, it, it was kind of fun. Um, went down to see Gabe the next day, and mm -hmm. I walked into his office, and he said, Peggy, I think it would be great to have someone oh, from good. the college on the city council. Oh, so he was supportive. He, he was didn't very have to worry supportive. about any... No, nope, very yeah. supportive. Good. Um, so I ended up getting the appointment. Yeah. Along with David Balk, and oh, it yes, was I the first David of Balk. a long series, because when you're appointed like that, you're appointed for the remaining, th that year, then you have to run for the remaining year of the term. Then I had to run for a full four-year term. I ran for a second four-year term and lost. So I was off the council for yes. about four years yes. and then repeated the cycle because there was a vacancy. I got appointed again, had to run <laughs> well, for the remaining same, year of the same term. Well, yep. at least you were familiar with it. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> so that's you had to do sure. it all over again. Yeah. So you actually yeah. ran four times for two two terms, I yeah, guess. Yeah, actually it's if you probably, would. yeah, one, two, three, probably it'd run about six times. Six times, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. But, well, but, you've been uh, very active on the city council and you yeah. serve as president now. You were president since 2008. And um, there's a lot of things that are happening in Schenectady. Uh, uh, we'll get into some of your other community leadership things, but as long as we're on the topic, Schenectady, things are happening. They uh, really are. This, the homes program, uh, they've done so many uh, loans and sold so many properties through that promotional program in the city yep. with uh, cooperation of banks and local businesses. Yep. Maybe you want to talk about that? Um, yeah, I think the, the mayor you know, really feels very strongly that the best way to revitalize our neighborhoods is neighborhoods. to have, get people living in, ho in the homes That's rather than key. having absentee landlords. And yeah. So he's taken in a very aggressive yeah. stance on foreclosures and, yes. as I says, promoting the home program with Key Bank. And right. there have been numerous other partners now that have come in. and. Um, I know that they said they have sold over 100 homes. Yeah, and, that's great. Uh, so if we can just kind of keep that momentum going, it's going to really help our tax base and, as I said, help revitalize our neighborhoods. Absolutely, and that's great. That's what the city needs. Then we talked about the Erie uh, Boulevard uh, project. Yes, uh, that's exciting. I, I mean, saw recently that it's ahead of schedule. No, so. that was amazing. Uh, how do you think and that's going to affect the city and its image oh, when I it's done? Oh, I think very, very positively. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be, I think, a beautiful stretch of highway, number yes. one, which you know, is a good entryway into the city, and I think that's going to, well, I think there was an article in the Gazette not too long ago about Lower State Street and the fact that yes. we're starting to see more development there, yes. and a lot of that's part in part because of what's going on on Erie Boulevard. Well, so, it's great. I mean, it started with the 400 block, you know, yeah. that was always the focus and the focus, but uh, the, the development and, and the, and the uh, concentration has, has moved down to Erie Boulevard yeah. and uh, Lower State Street, so little by little, it's encompassing the, the, you know, the wider uh, peri perimeters of the city, and yes. it's, all, it's all good. Yes, it really is. And Erie Boulevard is like <clears throat> one of the main entrances off of uh, 890 yeah. with the General Electric Company, and of course famous for right. uh, starting here in Schenectady. So it's a, it's a welcome, uh, yes. visual welcome and greeting, that, which should look good for visitors and, and business people. Definitely. So I think that's going to be a big you know, thing. And then once we get the Alco site developed too, it's right. going to be you yeah. know, kind of the, yeah. the other end. Of, the other know. end, yeah. So it's all good long-range planning. Yes. It's, all, it's all good. Yep. Yeah. The, Alco, the, the Alco Museum is a nice place too. I yes. think that's great. Oh, yes. Um, for, for a group of volunteers to have uh, Unbelievable all of that. what they accomplished. Yes. You, you know and I know to do a museum or a, a you know, a... a uh, a project like that, it, it takes a lot of money yes, and a lot of a, a lot of support for private people to do it. Yeah. 
it's I think that's heroic. Yeah, a lot of time. Yeah, yeah. been in there, and I'm sure it's going to grow. And uh, I hope so. It's a nice, nice exhibit, and that'll be yeah. a good part of that that area of the city. Right. Um, you've done so many other things. You were on the Electric City Arts and Entertainment Board. With you. And I served with you on that, yep. which was great, uh, yep. promoting and facilitating downtown events and right. working with proctors. And did you enjoy you enjoy the arts yourself? I love the personally? arts. I think yeah. that's one of the things when I, that also kept me here was proctors. You know, yes. I just I got involved early on as being an usher. And yes, then, uh, volunteer at proctors. So I you know, love doing that. And yeah. It's, uh, you know, you get to see a lot more shows than maybe I could afford to go to. And yeah. it's, uh, yeah. you know, you feel like you're, you're kind of giving back. And I think what Philip Morris has done at Pro with proctors and, you know, we've got some pretty outstanding people with Philip Morris and Ray Gill and then Chuck Steiner at the chamber. And, yes. You know, just and everybody kind of working together, yes. you know, to, to try and, and bring things along. And All I think great it's people. It's been really good. All great people. Yeah. Also Upper Union Street, too. I mean, that's that's mm -hmm. really seen some yes. nice redevelopment, too. Yes. So, you know, gradually as we're getting out to the different neighborhood areas. Yeah. And, yeah, just, yep. and yeah. that's that's what what was needed. I mean, I, we, we, we got the business accomplishments I don't say done, but we got so many new businesses coming in with the help of Metroplex, an unusual, unique first uh, for Schenectady, a funding organization. Yeah. And uh, and now it's the neighborhoods and, and right. going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. I think that's great. Yeah. You're on the Schenectady Day Nursery Board, the uh, yeah. Girls Incorporated. If anything strikes you here you want to comment on, let me know. Schenectady Local Development Corporation, that's an economic development corporation. Mm -hmm. Uh, economic uh, SEDC. I was on that years ago in the 80s. Uh, yeah. Economic Development Corporation. It's connected the Industrial Envelop uh, Development Corporation, the Museum and the Planetarium. You were a board member, mm -hmm. uh, co-chair of the 2000 Arts uh, Entertainment Task Force, a community plan for the revitalization of the city of Schenectady. Schenectady Symphony Orchestra. How'd you get involved in that one? Are I you a just, musician? Or no, a, a, I have no talent. Yeah? I have no talent whatsoever, but <laughs> oh, I, I sure love the do, arts yeah, and uh, uh, yep. love oh, classical nice. music and yep. all that. So, oh, that's uh, great. I was asked to be. I was on it a number of years ago, and then I've recently gone back on it. Oh, and, nice. You know, trying well, to trying. Well, to they're help uh, fortunate to have uh, uh, a person like you on their board, as all all of the others uh, uh, are. And then the Villagers Annual Outdoor Art Show, that was good. That's down in the stockade. stockade yes. And I worked on that a little bit, and that's that's been great. The uh, Heritage Walkabout, I know there's a little hiatus on that, but for years they're, they did the walkabout. And they're hoping and, to bring that back this I hope fall. so, yeah. yeah. That's a great so. thing, because we have so much history. And you live in the stockade. Yes, uh, yes. In that area, and I hope that that continues. But thanks for your work on that. Yeah. Uh, what kind of advice could you give to women today as far as involvement in uh, young women? Uh, or any women getting involved in the community service, public service, political arena. Um, just if you have an interest, just do it. Yeah. It's just, it's so rewarding. You yeah. know, it's just when you see things being accomplished or you feel you're able to help people and things like that, it's just really, really nice. Mm -hmm. and, and I think today there's so much more opportunity for women. Yes. Uh, you know, back when I was graduating from college, it was you were a teacher, a nurse, or a secretary. Yeah. And uh, now women can go in so many different fields. And, yes. and again, there's just so many volunteer opportunities out there. So if you, yeah. you know, have a passion or, or an interest, um, just I really encourage you to get involved. You know, just contact the local organization and yeah. just see how, if there's some way that you can be of help to them. And yeah. I know things like the, um, um, yeah. Clinic for Pets, you know, they're always looking for volunteers, yes. and uh, just a lot of the agencies are. That's a good way to get started, to volunteer. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you get to meet people, you network, you, you learn, um, and then you it might pique an interest, and then it might become something else. It might yes. be a, a career could, track. Or exactly. It could be a paid position, and you've done so much of it. I mean, uh, I'm sure that any talented person with a, a desire and interest that would approach an organization like any of these that you've been on uh, and said, I, I'd like to volunteer, I don't think they'd be turned away. No, no. So that's a, that's a good place to and start. And it was really interesting, just the other day a woman asked me, do we keep a volunteer list for the city? Yeah. And I thought, I've got to remember to mention that to the mayor. In you fact, know, that's because not a bad that's idea. not a bad idea when you have a park cleanup yes, or, you know, yes. just yeah. all different Why things. Why not? You know, if you had a, 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 a cadre of people ready to go, you know, already on a list saying, you know, give yeah. me something to do, then you call on. You know, years ago, I think it was Al Danzig and Vince Master Francisco, I don't know if you remember Vince, 
He was the executive director of the Boys Club. Okay, yeah. And they had a program called This One's For You. And it was to recognize volunteers in the city of Schenectady. Right. And they used to do it on Proctor's stage. And Price Chopper and other organizations would furnish like some refreshments. And they'd give a certificate to everyone and they'd compliment everyone. And anyone that volunteered in any capacity at all. And they used to, used to have a couple thousand people come I to I bet. It. Yeah. Uh, I'm not saying we should go to that extent again, right. but why not, you know, uh, capitalize on, on this volunteer effort? Schenectady is unique, isn't it, yes. with volunteers? I, see, I, I don't think, think so. I don't think there's any place like it. No. You know, how many people would volunteer for, like, two dozen <laughs> things, like you, uh, in addition yeah. not to Not all your, at the same time. Yeah, but, but it, <laughs> I know, but in addition to your teaching responsibilities and your, you know, your government responsibilities, I mean, it's a, it's a huge commitment of time and uh uh, effort. So uh, Schenectady is unique, and you're one of those unique people. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and we appreciate you being here. So um, any other future things coming up in the city or goals of yours that you want to discuss before we leave today? Um, um, well, one is to try and get teams of us from the council and the mayor, you know, out to meet with the different neighborhood groups. And, yeah. And as I said, keep our focus on neighborhoods. And, yeah, and neighborhood and associations are important. They really uh, are. Knowing your neighbors are important. You know, we have, you know, there's, there's no secret that we have a lot of uh, renters and non-owner uh, uh, occupants of properties and uh, that's a little different you know years mm -hmm. ago the immigrants came and the GE they got jobs and then they built two family houses and families lived together and everybody knew their neighbors and families knew each other then they moved out upscaled you know and either sold the properties or, um, or rented them and it's, a, it's sort of a different neighborhood environment so the neighborhood associations are very important and I've been involved and in, I know you have, and um, we have to support them and communicate with them. Definitely. Because that's where we find out what the needs are and what's really happening in the right. neighborhoods. And they've also been able to do some really good things within their neighborhoods. I think particularly yes. the Woodlawn Park area, you know, yes. where they've totally cleaned up that park. And, yes. You know, they just continue to make improvements, and it's happening in most of the neighborhoods, Mont, yes. Mont Pleasant, and, yeah. you know, it, yep. and that's really a benefit for the city you it know, is. because in many cases there's there's things that right now of course with our tight, tough financial times yes. that the city can't afford to be right. able to do but in some where the neighborhood people are coming pulling together and make Absolutely. making some positive yeah. changes it's been really really good yeah, on the north side Steinmetz Park there was yeah. a, a planning um, uh, uh, effort and uh, for the uh, we used to call it the casino, but the, the building there for the bathhouse. Oh, yes. We got a grant from the Elks uh, Foundation uh, to uh, be coupled with the city and state funding that is, is coming through, we understand. Mm -hmm. But there'll be improvements at Steinmetz Park, Steinmetz Park and that's all yeah. because of grassroots efforts yes. uh, working with the city. Right. Yeah, so that's all right. good. Well, Margaret King, Dr. King, affectionately and Peggy. commonly known as Peggy because of all your community <laughs> service. Peggy King, thank you for being with us. This is Women's History Month, and you are a most appropriate guest, and we're happy to see you. Good luck with your work on the Schenectady City Council as Schenectady City Council President and all the other things that you enjoy, including the arts and your volunteer uh, activities. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you. We hope that you come back again and visit us again soon, sure. and we wish you well. Thanks. Thank you. We've been visiting with uh, Dr. Margaret King, Peggy King, uh, president of the Schenectady City Council. You've been watching Impact. I'm your host, Nick Barber, and uh, we'll see you next time.
Proctors, bringing the best in arts, education, and entertainment.